When you think about uh, other areas of, um, of society where when we discover that something is bad for us, we shift gears and adopt policies to protect people from that damaging thing, and we pass regulations and we educate people. Uh, uh, smoking, for example, you know, years of research adds up to this is not good for us, so we change. But with reading, the odd thing is that bad ideas stay with us much longer than they should. <laughs> to get a perspective on this, I went back through some of the old readers that I like to collect. When I go into antique bookstores, I pick up any old readers that are kicking around that I can add to my stash. And this one was a, a spelling book from 1950, when actually I was a first grader. So what this says is, this is how to spell a word. How to study a word you missed. Look at the word and say it softly. Look at the word and say the letters softly. Maybe you could look at the word and say it loudly, too. <laughs> Close your eyes and say the letters softly. Write the word without looking to see how it is spelled in your book. Look at your book to see if you got the word right. Keep trying till you get it right. <laughs> and this is 1950, but the fact is, we have institutions who are teaching this now as a way to spell. This is 65 years later after decades of research. So um, in contrast to what we know works in instruction, these beliefs, these attitudes, these practices go on still unchallenged at the level that they need to be challenged in a way that is not very accepting or tolerant. We need to be less tolerant. We need to be outraged. We need to put our foot down. We need to have a coordinated campaign to change this. It's time to change it. We need to advocate, of course, for all of these aspects of instruction. Everybody in this room understands that these are the aspects of instruction that are going to get us somewhere in the treatment of reading and language-based uh, literacy learning uh, disabilities. <clears throat>